Okay, so uh, Gatsby in in we'll say popular culture is known as a static site generator. Uh, in Gatsby's marketing collateral at the moment, all references to static site generators have been removed. So they don't see it as a static site generator, more as a single page app. app. Uh, and we're going to see how, how that's going to work uh, later on. So it, it, if you talk about a static site generator, often it means that you're talking about a small website or you're talking about something that's not ambitious or you're talking about something that uh, maybe doesn't have dynamic content such as a commenting system or such as uh, an e-commerce store. But Gatsby can handle all of this. Um, welcome. <laughs> Excuse me, I'll get my train of thought back. <laughs> okay, so this is this is we're, we're calling it a live demo of how to use uh, Drupal uh, to create a, a decoupled website. Uh, it's not exactly live because what it actually is is a, you're going to see me cheating. Is I've got five Git branches and each Git branch has the exact code that I want, <laughs> so it can't go wrong. Uh, or so we hope. So what we're going to use in Drupal is this uh, Umami uh, um, demo. So I'm one of Drupal core maintainers for the Out of the Box initiative. So this is this is what what we built. So this is the, the homepage of it, and then we've got an articles listing page, and then we've got an individual article. And to get the data from this, we're going to use a JSON API module. So this is this is what JSON API gives us back in terms of all of the articles that are available on the website. <coughs> And then we're going to use JSON API to get an individual article. Uh, again, this is this is what Drupal gives us, gives us back from that. So <clears throat> I'm not going to get into any detail at all about uh, kind of how to get Gatsby, how to install Gatsby. I'm going to presume you can read the, the, the intro page on Gatsby.org and, and see what happens. So when you install Gatsby, this is what you get out of the box. Um, you've got a header at the top, you've got a main body area here, and you've got a footer down here, and you've got a link to page two which brings us to the second page, and, and that's it. So that's that's uh, your initial uh, introduction, we'll say, to Gatsby. So if we uh, get check out part one, and we're going to run a command over here called Gatsby Develop. Gatsby Develop starts a development server for us with a development version of React uh, and all the debugging and hot reloading and, and, and things like that uh, for us. We've got a second command that's called Gatsby Build, um, which will build a production version of the website for us, which has production ready and compressed CSS and uh, uh, minified JavaScript and, and things like that. So if we run Gatsby develop here, this is going to go off and do some things and start running for us, and then we come back to our website and refresh the page, and <laughs> like, like then was it? Um, okay, so. I've done nothing here except change some of the content, and what, what, what I'm trying to do here is just show us some of the things we get with Gatsby out of the box. So some of the interesting things we have are a component called Link Component. Now this is this is using React uh, under the hood to, uh, to to create this. What a Link Component is, is that it's like an anchor tag, except if you use an anchor tag, an anchor tag will refresh the page for you, and the, the, the whole page will, will, will reload. If you use a Link Component, React will convert this into, a, into an anchor tag for us, but it will only reload the part of the page that it needs to reload. So for example, if this was a commenting system, and you click on something that has a link component, it will just reload that one little small div that has the new comment in it, and that allows us to have a very fast website. So when we look at this, for example, if I, when I click on this link component link, you'll notice that the header up here won't change and won't move. Uh, the footer will, because the footer is hardcoded into the, the, the body um, at the moment. So we click here. You can see that the only thing that changed was the main body area here. If we go back to the home page. Uh, again, if we click on the layout component, you'll see that the only thing changing is the main body area. That allows us to have a very fast website uh, out of the box with Gatsby. But what's even better about it is that any component on your page that uses the link component, when you, when you load up that page, all of those items that, that are linked to, Gatsby will go and get a kind of a low level cache version of that. And then when you hover over the link, it will actually go and start rendering the page for you. So by the time you actually click on the link, that page will have loaded in the background. And again, that, that, that gives us great, uh, great performance. So on, on top of that then, we've got, I, I'll show you the image component in a, in a moment. If I click on it now, it's going to break. <laughs> Except it's not. Uh, we've got a layout component. The layout component for us is basically the same as page.html.twig in Drupal. That's where we render the header, um, 
uh, region, let's call it, and the footer region, and whatever blocks are going into into the main um, the, the main content. Uh, we can see those here. So we've got layout, and here it renders a header. We've got some inline style. It renders a main content area, and then it renders a footer. Um, as well as these, though, so we've also got an SEO component. So what the SEO component does is it, it puts a page title into our uh, into our, our meta, meta tags, and we can also add in all our open graph tags for for Facebook or um, uh, our meta, meta descriptions for Twitter and car uh, those kinds of things as, as well. Um, and then on a page by page basis, we can override it. So by default, if we look at SEO.js. We pull the information from the, the metadata um, component that's inside our Gatsby config.js down here. So here's our site metadata, here's our title, here's our description, here's our author. And then on a page by page basis, we, we can override those. So if I look at, at my SEO component.js page, which is this page here, we can see that I'm overriding the title with Gatsby SEO, I'm putting in some keywords here, and I've changed the description to say this is all about SEO, and then I render my actual <laughs> SEO page itself. You can see then the link component here, this is this is what I was talking about a moment ago, it's quite like a, a general anchor tag, but instead of putting an A tag here, and instead of putting a href here, we call it link, link to rather than a href, like so. And, and that's what we, we need to do for that. Um, Images, in general, are, are, are very tricky to work with um, in web design because now we've got responsive images, we've got the picture element, we've got uh, different croppings for you know depending on, on on the device you're on or depending on the the screen weight and things like that. Um, Gatsby has a, a an image plugin which will do two things. Number one, it will um, load a kind of a, a very very low resolution version of the image, so it'll be kind of blurred out until you actually scroll down, so you get lazy loading by default. But also, it will um, take the image and crop it, and uh, you know, whatever kind of what we call image styles in Drupal, whatever you want to add to it like that, Gatsby can do that for us out of, out of the box. So, for example, if you look at this image here, it's 4.2 megabytes in the repo, and it's 134 megabytes in, in in Gatsby. So, if I come over to my uh, images directory here and I try to look at this image of Atoms, uh, VS, no, sorry, which one is? Um, I was going to say it doesn't even open up, <laughs> but it does. Uh, I thought it was it was too big. It's not supposed to. But what, one 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 issue I kind of have with it is that, and again, it's like the the uh, scale and crop in Drupal. It will find the point of most interest for the image itself, and in this image here, it, it's for example, it's decided that this apartment complex is the point of most interest, not me, <laughs> and not the Acropolis in Athens <laughs> behind us. So we might have a little bit of work still to, to do to do on that. Uh, when it came to the Berlin Wall, it decided that the Berlin Wall was was, was the important thing. Okay, so that's kind of we'd say what Gatsby looks like out of the box and explaining some of the components. Let's go to the next step now, where we're going to um, change some things for ourselves. So we get check out uh, part two, and I need to stop my development server, and then I need to start it again. Uh, Gatsby. So things have changed a little bit now. Uh, I have, on, on, if you look at my GitHub account, you can see this repo. So if you want to kind of go back to see the code that I've, I've written, uh, and it's not necessarily best practice code. Some of this because I, I am trying to show kind of this is how you can use, say, for example, SAS in in Gatsby, even though kind of everyone is using um, style components or you know uh, CSS and JS. So, but it's just kind of showing different different approaches. So looking here at part two, what we've done here is we've created a menu component. There was no menu component originally. We just had a link back to home page in, in the bottom of our, of our body. Um, we've also created a footer component and a header component has been edited. So now the header component will render the menu component. We've edited the layout component, I'll, I'll show you the code in, in a moment, to uh, now render a header and a main body and a footer, whereas a few moments ago it was, it was just hard coding the, the footer into it. And then we've added support for SAS in case somebody wants to use it. Um, and that's, that's as simple as adding um, npm install node sas and Gatsby plugin sas 
uh, and all of the kind of plugins that, that you might need, like the image plugin, plugin or the, the SAS uh, plugin or style components, it's, it's all really as simple as just this kind of a command here to get the item you want, and then you add this plugin in your Gatsby config. So if we look at Gatsby config down here, we just have to add this line here, Gatsby plugin SAS, to allow us to, to use uh, SAS. And to use SAS then in, in our Gatsby, what we get out of the box is um, is a CSS file. So for example, beside layout.js, we get layout.css. To use SAS, all we have to do is change this from CSS to SCSS. And, and everything worked after that. There was, there was no change in the compiling. There was no change in, 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 in the workflow. So looking now at the uh, menu component, so this is, this is a new directory we've got here called components. And we've got our menu component here. In menu.js, we create a variable called menu. We allow it to have some props, and the only props we're going to allow it to have is a menu class. And what we're going to do with that menu class is just as simple as adding uh, background dark or background light um, into it. So that allows it to have a light background menu at the top and a dark background menu at the bottom. But kind of like Drupal, it lets us see that we can, we can create a component in one place and we can reuse it somewhere else. And by giving it another prop or changing its state, we, 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 can, we can change its, its variables. Also then, we can see that, you know, this is very bad, let's say, as a mobile menu, but uh, we can see that we've got a mobile menu on the top and we don't on the bottom. So again, by just, just adding or changing our, our props, we, we, can, we can get that. So the menu then is, is kind of bit standard enough HTML. Uh, we've got our UL here, we've got our LI here, and then we've got lots of link to uh, components. Now, what, what's tricky with, with menus is um, getting an active class. So if you're reading a blog, and so forward slash blog, forward slash no title, uh, you want the blog item in the menu to have an active class. With Gatsby and, 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 and this setup, all you've got to do is say that the active class name is a uh, whatever you want to call it, and then you style that appropriately. And then whenever you are on that active class, so we're on part two, you can see part two now is, is highlighted. So the, the routing system built into Gatsby allows, allows to have, have this very, very easy that you, you can't often get uh, if you're going to kind of start from scratch yourself and write HTML, let's say, for a, for, for, for a site. Um, the footer then, again, it's fairly simple. It's just what was in the footer is just now inside a footer component. And that means then that when we want to call the footer, we render just a footer component here on its own. Now, what's nice about this is that it then means we can render different footers on different, uh, different pages if, if, we, if, we, if we wanted that. We could have either different classes for background properties, or else we'd have different um, content in, in each of these footers. Sorry. <coughs> um, the header then we can see here has changed slightly so where we, we had this much of a header earlier on we now have a menu component rendered as well and we've given it some classes here that we said for the props that the menu was allowed to have so we said it, it gets a class of menu it gets a class of menu light BG and it gets a class of menu is mobile and that's what allows us to have the button to, to uh, have, have more mobile navigation um, okay, so that's, that's kind of, we'd say, part two. Let's move on slightly now to part three, where we will look at adding uh, style components and typography.js. Okay. We've added two new things here. Um, number one, we've added a, a new plugin called Typography.js. Typography.js was created by the Gatsby folk, but it's, in, it's, a, it's a standalone uh, plugin which allows us to set up our fonts and our vertical rhythms and our line heights very, very easily and in one file. <coughs> so we can see what's changed here, for example, we've, is we've, we've got a new font for our title and we've got a new font for our body. Um, to do that, we've got our typography.js file, um, so what we added first to our Gatsby config, here, and we've told Gatsby config then that you'll find a configuration for typography.js in a directory called source slash utils slash typography. So that's 
utils here and topography.js. Now, with, with topography.js, you you, there's lots of presets. So if you want your website to look like, say, WordPress 2020, you can you can uh, just uh, import topography from topography and then set const topography equals new WordPress 2020, and that's all you got to do. If you want them to override parts of that, you can. So what we've done here is we're setting up our own system for topography. We're going to say that our base font is 24 pixels, and we're going to say our baseline height is 1.5, and we're going to say our scale ratio is 3. Scale ratio means the difference between our base font, so say our body font, our paragraph font, and our H1. So we can see over here that this H1 will be 72 pixels because it's 24 pixels multiplied by 3, and then H2, H3, H4, H5, H6 will be rep, um, uh, kind of a representative of, of, of that. Um, so if we change very quickly, say, the scale ratio from 3 to, let's go with maybe 7, just to see, see the extreme change, and click Save. This page will refresh. We can see we've got a much bigger font here, but we can see that this is still at 24 pixels down, down, down here. So we, we can build up very, very nice vertical rhythms and, and topography scale systems uh, by just changing one line of code or two, two lines of code. Uh, if you want to use any Google fonts, so for example here we're using uh, Roboto, and we're also using Alpha Slab 1. To do that, you just add a parameter called Google Font, and you put in the name of the font you want and the weight you want, and that's it. So if we want to change this, we'll say from Alpha Slab 1 to, let's just go with Georgia only, and refresh. And that's how you, how you, how you do your topography, that's how you do your vertical rhythm. I think that's, a, that's an amazing uh, plugin, and it's, it's something I'd love for us to use in, kind of internally in Anatech, even for non-Gatsby projects. Um, I seem to get hit the man's head a few times to make sure nothing changes or my light demo might not be so light. Um, okay, after that then we, we, we've got a new component called Styled Components. Styled Components is a CSS in JS solution. I'm not saying CSS in JS is the correct solution. I'm not saying it's the incorrect solution. I'm just saying it is a solution. Uh, I haven't made up my mind yet if I like it or I don't. I'm kind of thinking that what does it matter if the extension says .js or .css? Um, one of the really good things, in fairness, about uh, um, CSS in JS is that you get all the benefits of JavaScript, which are CSS as well. So any math, maths that you, you can do, or any formulas, or any for, for loops or if statements, you can do all of this now in your CSS because it's inside a JavaScript file. And I think that, that that's a, a nice benefit. So with style components, there's, there's two things you, you, you can do. One is you can import a component as itself, or you can import a component with a different element. So for example, if you have, um, style components. if you've got a button down here, okay, say a link, and the link says sign up to our uh, newsletter. <clears throat> and when you click on that link, it brings you to a newsletter page. And on the newsletter page, you've got a form. And you want the sign up button on the form to look the exact same as the link. Well, using style components, you can say uh, import button as A. And that means it will import the button component, but instead of using the button element, it will use the A element. So it means you can, you can have two components, or one component, let's say one, one design item, let's, let's call it, uh, that are exactly identical, even though there are different elements. So we, we can see here where we've got this is the heading one, this is the heading two at the top, and the same at the bottom. Well, these ones here are just directly hard coded H1, H2, H3, etc. Whereas down here, I'm importing a heading component that I created, and I'm importing heading component as H1, and then I can give it a class of large or small or whatever. So we, we can be um, concerned about the semantics uh, only for semantics sake. And then we can be concerned about the layout and the design for design sake. And, and we have a kind of a separation of concern. So the accessibility should still be perfect and the designer should still be able to design the way, the way that they want to. Um, these two buttons down here, I'll show you the code for those in a minute. I think these are perfect and beautiful, uh, not least because I just copied and pasted the code from stylecomponents.org. Thank you very much, people. Uh, so the style, so we, we got a button component here. So to create the style component button, what we've, we've said is that we create a, a variable here, const here, called button. And this gets a capital B for its, its React name rather than the element it's talking about. And we're saying that this button is a, what's called a styled button. The style comes from the style components part up here. And then we've given it some properties in CSS. And then we've said it, that the button can have a prop. And if it has a prop called primary, we're going to change the background color to this. And we're going to change the text color to this. 
uh, so we can see then here we've got a normal button and a primary button and the only difference between one and the other is it's got a, a primary something <laughs> somewhere in the background um, okay so if you want to create a new component then so if we want to create a uh, const we call it Drupal so we we'll say Drupal is going to be a, a paragraph so we we'll say it is, is a style 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 dot p okay so this this creates the component first but then we put in two back ticks and these template literals is what actually gives us the, the uh, the, the properties for itself. So it can be kind of hard to see when you're just looking at it up here. You might not realize that there's a back tick here and another one down here. And the same then for this section. So it's when you put in the back ticks here that then you can start writing your uh, color and whatever properties you, you, you want to write. And then, so we've, we've got this, this um, button element. When we want to use that somewhere then, so for example, if we come across here to our, um, where are we going? Style components pages. You get to type on uh, styles. It's styly now. I try to. It's his highlighting too. How is that? <laughs> <laughs> so if we want to use our button component, we just render the button here. And what we can do then is we could we could render the button here then with a proper primary or, or, or whatever one and that that's you can, you can see this repeating over and over again like in layout we render the header then we in the header we render the the header element and also the menu component uh in the main the layout then we render the main with the children and we render the footer and it's the same same here we're just we're just kind of you create the component in one place and then you reuse it where you where you where you want to okay so that gets us up as far as we'll say basically how to how to use uh Gatsby to create a standard site. We're going to look next at how to use Gatsby then to get data from Drupal. Um, actually, maybe one other thing we could look at quickly is how to create a new page. So to create a new page, you've got a pages directory here, and all you got to do is create one new JavaScript file, and that creates the page for you, including all the routing and, uh, and caching and everything else. So if we take, for example, the style component page here, we need that one. We we'll go with this one here, the page three page, and we'll save this, and we'll call it Drupal.js, and we come back to our website, and we go to forward slash Drupal. This is the new page that we created a second ago. Now, if we edit the content, what's changed here, and we put in uh, Marky, we come back. So we can see there's there's a new page. I think that's really good. It's it's, it's a great way to to. Uh, to be able to see how quickly we, we can we can uh, add pages to our to our website. So looking next, then at we'll talk about Drupal. So for Drupal, we need to install. Um, check out <coughs> part four. We've installed the JSON API module. Once you install the JSON API module, every entity on your website is is now uh, following um, JSON API format and standards for every node, for every user, for every uh, commerce entity, um, and it's quite safe. I, I tried to expose passwords and things like that in it, and I couldn't. Um, so we enable, I'm going to do Gatsby develop. Okay, what, while Gatsby develop is running here, what, what, what we're going to do is, there's a Gatsby plugin Drupal, uh, plugin, and that's what's going to connect Drupal to Gatsby. When, when, when that runs, and we'll, we'll see it here in a moment now, it'll say fetching data from Drupal, hopefully. Um, that, will, that will then be the, the, the connector for us. So what this means is that you could have a Drupal website, and it could be just on your local computer, and not available on the internet anywhere. And you can take the data from that, you can use Gatsby to create a static version of all of your pages, and then you can host those pages on Netlify or on GitHub pages, and your website is, in, in effect, uh, unhackable. Uh, one issue that you might have and have is that if you want to create a new page, you do have to go rebuild your Gatsby again. Now, if you've got 100,000 pages, that could be 10 or 15 minutes of a, of a build. Um, Gatsby is working on what they're calling incremental builds, so it will only rebuild the part of the website that it needs to build. So if you create a new page, it will, it will render or, or, or re recreate one new page for you. Um, that's not live just yet, but it's, it's, it's in the works. Uh, I don't see anything here where it says getting... Oh, here. So it's starting to fetch data from Drupal. So it gets all the nodes. So in, in our website, that took it 0.9 of a second to get all of the information for, from us. 
the ship mark here. Okay. Now we get an article listing page here. Now, ignoring say this being ugly because we can figure out CSS ourselves later on. What we have <laughs> over here in our out of the box demonstration is an article listing page, and we've got give it a grow, grow your own herbs, dairy free, delicious milk chocolate, and the really good for supermarket savvy shopping. And the same over here, we've got give it a grow, grow your own herbs, dairy free, delicious milk chocolate, the really good supermarket savvy shopping, and so on. So we, we, we've got the listing page, and we've also got an individual article. And you'll note then as well that we've got uh, URLs as well. So this, this means that we, we can, even though Gatsby develops a single page application, and every time we click on anything, nothing changes except the component that we, we want to render, we can still get U URLs at the, at the, in our URL bar, so we can hot link or deep link directly to, to a, a page with, within our, our website. Uh, to do this, so we, we've, we've added Drupal, the Gatsby Drupal plugin. We then come to our Gatsby config, and we tell Gatsby config that we want to use Gatsby source Drupal, and then we give the URL of the website where it's going to find the JSON API field uh, uh, feed. So in this, it's umami.local, yours could be example.com or anatech.com, whatever it is. You don't need to put in the forward slash JSON API and things like that because Gatsby plugin Drupal knows that you're going to use JSON API and it knows the endpoint that it's, it's going to need to look. Um, if it doesn't, you've done something wrong, not Gatsby. <laughs> So when, when we get to um, here, we've created a new page called articles.js. Okay, and in articles.js, what we do then is we're, we're importing our layout. So we get the page structure, we get page.html.twig, let's say, and we import our SEO component, and that gives us our metadata. We create a new uh, const here called articles page, which can pull some data. We then render our layout component, render our SEO component. We put in our title here uh, in our H1 tag, and we give it a, an unordered list. Now, what, 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 what Gatsby is going to do is it's going to use this parameter here called all node article. You can't change this. This is what the people who wrote the Gatsby Drupal plugin decided to call it. So it, uh, it gets all the nodes on our website that are of type article. If we've got a basic page content type, you can also use all node page. If you've got um, a blog, you'll have all node, all, all node blog. Then we use the edges parameter here. Those edges and nodes in React or Gatsby or ES6, I'm not sure which. And if you want to know which one to use, whether edges or nodes, you try edges first. And if it doesn't work, you try nodes. <laughs> And you don't ask a question at the end, what's the difference? <laughs> so we're going to map each of these. This, this is using standard ES6 syntax now. We're going to map each of these article nodes um, using the, the new parameter here. We're, we're going to call edge, so for, for, for items in item, let's say. Um, and we're going to put in a, an li tag, and we're going to put in some inline CSS here. Now, I don't like inline CSS, but again, it's just an example of how you can, you can write inline CSS if you want, or you can use style components for CSS and JS, or you can use SAS if you want to use a more kind of standard CSS, or you can write just standard CSS if you want. And then we're going to put a H3 here. I'm not sure why, because it should be H2 if it's inside a H1. But <laughs> we're going to put a H3 here, and we're going to link this. So this is going to get us the, the, the node title. So we're, we're going to look at the parameter of node, and this is the Drupal node here, and we're going to get the title from it. And in, uh, that title is going to be wrapped up inside a link component, and it's going to link to the path alias. So if we look over here and down in the bottom left corner, you can see that this is linking to give it a grow and grow your own herbs. And this will link to <coughs> article slash dairy free delicious milk chocolate. Then we put in the parameter here for when the node was created. Uh, some more CSS inline. And with this, we're going to render the image component. And we've got a fairly deep uh, nested item here to get down to where the image is. And we pop that out. And then we st dangerously set in our HTML, like this is dangerously set in our HTML. Uh, Facebook called it this on purpose to let people know that kind of <coughs> be careful if you're doing this. So whatever can go into your input field can come out here. Now, using Drupal and the, the form API, we can be fairly confident that the, the data coming back out is fairly is safe uh, from our, our filters, but potentially someone could put JavaScript in here or some, some malicious uh, tracking cookies or, or, or code. 
uh, and that can come back out. Uh, so if you're using, uh, it's the kind of the, the React version of that inner HTML. Um, just be, be careful that, that you're, you trust the data that, that's coming into it. And then we're going to get the body, and we're going to uh, put out the body, but we're going to split it at 25 words. So this is not 25 characters. So on the 25th word, our teaser is going to get cut. So it, rather than characters, it means then we're not going to cut a word in half. And then we're going to put three ellipses onto the end of it. And we can see that here then. So we've got 25 words here, and then we've got our three ellipses. <laughs> to to, to get, get this to work then, at the bottom of the page, we create a GraphQL query. So the query we're going to create is it's going to look up the all node article parameter created by Gatsby plugin Drupal. It's going to get the edges, not the nodes. Um, the reason I know to use edges here is because GraphQL told me. And then we're going to look up the Drupal node itself. And we're, the, the, the things we want to find back from this are the node ID, the title, the alias of the path, and then the body field. And then we pop down here to this relationships section, which, which will have things like taxonomy terms or uh, other entity references. You, it, this is where you'd find your, say, paragraphs and things like that. Um, to, to get this then in GraphQL to, in a more kind of um, visual manner, we can use this GraphQL interface here. So if we hit control and space, it gives us all the possibilities of what we can search in, 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 in this lookup. So we're going to search with a query. And then we're going to hit control and space again, and it tells us that we can look for all site. And what happened at, um, at Front End United, I was giving this talk, and I was doing the live demo, and I was showing this, and I couldn't find my all node articles. And somebody in the audience told me afterwards, I needed to refresh my page. <laughs> because I had this on before, the, and I said, thank you very much for telling me afterwards. <laughs> so if, if I'm wrong, please interrupt me. and. Let everyone benefit from, 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 from the knowledge. So we should now be able to see our all node articles. So there's all node page, all node recipe, all node article. And control space. And we are looking here at edges, I think it was. Oh, no. Thank you very much. There we go. <laughs> and from there, then, we're going to look for the node. And from here, we're going to look for the ID and the uh, title. And that's, that's enough just for now. So we, we, we'll uh, run this query. And this gives us back here. So we get each node has an ID and a title. And we can go on from there then to get the, we'll say, just get the body field and the value of that. And th th that's it. So that's, this is the, the GraphQL query that we saw in our articles.js here. <coughs> so what you can do then. You don't need to know GraphQL off the top of your head. You can come back to here then, and we can copy and paste this query from here directly into here. And that's the GraphQL query that, that we're, we're going to need. Now, we saw a moment ago with pages. And to create a new page, we just copy and paste a file, and we start editing it. If we've got 100,000 uh, blogs, blog, blog nodes on our website, we don't want to have to create 100,000 pages inside this directory. And if Gatsby creates it for us, well, that's great, but then we've still got 106, 100,006 um, uh, files to try to get through to find our articles.js or to find our 404 page. So instead, what we do is in Gatsby node here, we, we use an API that's part of Gatsby called Create Pages API. And what we're going to tell Gatsby here is to create a page on our website for every item you can find that matches a certain criteria. So in this sense, this, this one here, what we've said is using the all node article uh, search, get the node ID and get the path. And with the result of that, then for each of them, we're going to create a page. The path we're going to create is going to be whatever the node path alias is. And then the, uh, the I'll go to component in a second, then the context is the node ID. So, so in another component, we'll see here that we, where we create uh, this, we pass it an ID parameter, and the ID we pass it is the node ID, and we say that to, to create that then, you will find a new directory called, in source called templates and article.js. So this is where you have article.js, this is where you have page.js, this is where you have commerce product.js or, or, or whatever. And this is our, this is our kind of our, our node template. So if we look up here at our components, uh, sorry, source, we've got a new directory here called templates. I've got an article.js here. 
and this is quite like what we've seen before. So we, we are saying that use the layout component, uh, put in the article title, when it was published, uh, an image, and some inline CSS, and then the article, the article body here, and we re repeat uh, a small GraphQL query, and in this one here we pass in the ID we saw a moment ago. So, so and that, that's what, what allows us then to create one page on our website per per node, but not to pollute, let's say, our pages directory. And this all then goes up here in our public directory. Um, we should have them here. Yeah. So you can see all, all the different pages we've got created. Then they can go here and they can be as ugly as they want because they're, they're not going to be seen by us. Um, is that it? And that should give us then a page. I think that's it. Any questions? Yep. Uh, how well does Gatsby Drupal deal with authentication? I'd say if you want to sign in with no data. G Gatsby Drupal itself doesn't deal with authentication as far as I know. I'm, I'm not sure, but I, as far as I know it doesn't. I think you have to use a, a third party OAuth provider or something like that. Yeah. Uh, but that, that's, that's not a problem. Say that, that can be done with, with Gatsby. If that's the question, that's it. Yeah. Um, thank you. Um, you <coughs> showed uh, that the pages were rendered statically because that's what it's all about, right? Can you explain a little bit uh, how to deal with uh, dynamic pages like the search that you will be able to? Yeah, with a search, say, you wouldn't create a views page for a listing page because what, what, what you're going to get is uh, something like, like you're only dealing with JSON API. So instead of creating a view, you create a GraphQL query. And that's exactly the GraphQL query we saw here created on the articles uh, page. Now you can expose uh, these as, you can expose these fields as say inputs and buttons on, on your front end if you want. And as you would type into those, your search will be completing, and, or as you, you know, but it, it would all be powered by graph, gra GraphQL queries rather than SQL queries. Okay, thank you. <laughs>